forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly hangs it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby main. Just caught a touchdown. The family has a right to a private film. I don't think they have a right to force this kind of thing on the community in Oakland, and I'm very upset about it. Felix dealt in drugs over here in the village for years. He used young kids to deal with drugs. I don't think any of us here want our kids to be uh, brought up that way. And I think this is a good example of what happens when you deal with drugs. Depending on which side of the coin you want determines how you look at a guy like Felix Mitchell. To the city councilman at the time of his death, Carter Gilmore, he was nothing more than a drug pushing thug. I haven't had the chance to speak to any of the families of the kids that allegedly worked as spotters for him, but I'm sure on some nights he was a lifeline. Born in the mid 1950s and coming up in one of the poorest parts of Oakland, one thing is obvious about him he wasn't going to be waiting and wishing like a lot of the people around him. In Oakland, more than one third of the residents are Negro. They came to work in the defense industries around San Francisco Bay. But with the end of World War II, the jobs ended. The people, however, remained. And what began for many as an escape to jobs and freedom has ended in poverty amidst all the symbols of affluence. It is a story of people caught in a lifelong struggle between their hopes and their abilities and their discovery that no matter how hard they try, they will be losing just the same. Cadillac, a home, my own home, my own home, and put my mother in while I'm on the road. And I would also. The city of Oakland would see an influx of black people during World War II, though it would really start in the 1940s at a time that is now known as the Second Great Migration, with people flocking to the city looking for jobs and industries that supported the war, mainly the transportation industry, with a lot of blacks looking to that to be an easy way to move up to the middle class. Some people would come to the city looking to escape the racist South, and some people would probably just land in Oakland looking for better housing opportunities. But with the end of the war came hard times for the city, and they would occur almost immediately, starting in the 1960s when Felix would be around six years old. Oakland would experience a period of urban renewal, and during that time, the city would close 800 businesses, demolished 250,000 homes, and displaced 5,000 households. Then you would have the 1970s, when Felix would be around 16. The city would lose 12,000 traditional jobs in industries like utilities, transportation, manufacturing, and communications, crippling or already crippled city. If you put some jobs here, maybe we won't have this on the streets of Oakland. Go That's ahead. what it takes. Go ahead. Go ahead. You understand? And I know what he done. He was a good man. And we need to tell the city officials that if they get the jobs out there, then maybe it wouldn't be so much drugs in Oakland. By the time the mid-1970s rolled around in Oakland, the city was turning into a different place. Seeing the need for community structure, protection from police brutality, and other social ills. Huey P. Newton, Eldridge Cleaver, and Bobby Steele would go on to start an organization by the name of the Black Panther Party just 10 years prior in 1966. And in Oakland, just like most cities at this time, heroin was the drug of choice. Though always around, the demand for the drug would increase when veterans would return home from the recently ended Vietnam War addicted to morphine with people buying and even stealing surplus medical kits after the war just for the morphine that was inside. And almost exactly how it would play out in the 1995 war drama, Dead Presidents, starring Lorenz Tate and Chris Tucker. When the morphine ran out, 
a lot of the vets turned to heroin. By this time, Felix was said to be a high school dropout into peddling petty narcotics, possibly marijuana, maybe heroin on a minor scale, in one of Oakland's most dangerous communities on 69th Avenue in the San Antonio housing project. And it would be at this location where Felix was said to have formed and head the 6-9 mob, or the 69 mob, or mob, short for my other brother. And now that he had his location, all he needed was a connection. And he was said to have found that in a person widely noted as LA's first black kingpin, or the black godfather, Tootie Reese. And from then, Felix Mitchell would go on the run that Oakland hasn't seen since, in some cities, and most drug kingpins would never see. According to the government's indictment, issued on February 18, 1983, Felix and members of the 6-9 mob would operate a conspiracy from 1976 to 1983. The government would allege that the group would go from just some guys hanging out in the projects to a continuing criminal enterprise in early 1976 outlining that Felix would structure the mob as an organization as he directed its covert heroin activities in Oakland as well as other cities eventually as far as Detroit with the organization structure being upwards of 25 members with some members actually distributing the heroin on the streets others collecting the payments while others acted as lookouts on the streets and notified the sellers on the streets of approaching police cars and undercovers. They would use hand signals and walkie-talkies to communicate with them during the transaction and the distribution. The money was coming in, but in the infamous words of the notorious B.I.G., more money, more problems. There's a shooting war in Oakland, a deadly battle for turf between drug dealers, police, and citizens. The dealers shoot first and don't even bother to ask questions later. As Tom DeRees reports, the savagery in Oakland makes TV Vice seem almost nice. Another violent weekend in Oakland. Police are investigating four homicides and at least nine shootings in just three days. Eight shooting deaths in seven days. That is what Oakland police officers are dealing with right now. The most recent homicide happened just after six tonight in Oakland's Concordia Park. Seven other people have died across the city in just the last week. KTVU's Alyssa Harrington joins us live in Oakland, where some city leaders and community leaders are calling for action. Well, Christina, some of these latest shootings happened in broad daylight. The police chief has said that gun violence is plaguing the city, and now at least one city council member is calling for the federal government to provide some support. On Felix's rise to undisputed drug lord of Oakland, that position wouldn't come without opposition. During his time in the game, he would go at it with the Black Panthers, who were looking to clean up the streets of Oakland, but some would say it was more of an extortion attempt by the Panthers to try to muscle in on Felix's lucrative drug profits. He would also face oppositions from rivals in the game, most notably Mickey Mo Moore, who was also a high-level drug dealer, and at the time, the head of a collective called The Family. The two were said to be part of a drug war in Oakland, with the violence supposedly getting so bad, they would name one month in the summer of 1980, Bloody August. But his biggest rival would be the feds. Felix would be arrested on that indictment in 1985, and he would be sentenced to life in a trial where the government would present evidence that he was the drug lord that ran the 69 mob. Felix would be sent to Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary while a year into serving that life sentence, Felix Mitchell would be stabbed 10 times and murdered and even rumored to be burned in his cell, allegedly over what sounds like to me something the media would add to desensationalize your character, if you believe it or not, a $10 drug debt. But even in death, Felix wasn't finished. Meanwhile, the man authorities believe was behind a decade of bloody Oakland drug wars and killings was buried today, and police hope his passing is going to bring to an end an era of brutality in Oakland's turbulent history. But even in the end, this funeral today was flashy and controversial, and the city really couldn't do anything about it. Channel 7's Ed Leslie has details for us. 
Right along in here, I need just a little bit more room, please. A little bit more room. Just when the East Bay thought one of its most notorious hoods was gone forever, he came back to star in a funeral production fit for a king. Alas, it was his own. 32-year-old convicted drug racketeer Felix Mitchell was stabbed to death last week in his cell at Leavenworth. Mitchell was convicted in San Francisco federal court earlier this year after allegations that he was the kingpin in an East Oakland heroin dealership that featured fancy cars, flashy parties, and murders. Murders including victims who had nothing to do with Mitchell's mob, innocent people who were killed merely by accident. His neighborhood, however, was divided today on whether Felix Mitchell was a hero or a villain. There were others interested in the garish parade that made its way right down San Pablo Avenue, tying up traffic and amazing onlookers. This is totally ridiculous. And they were the detectives who helped send Mitchell to prison. They were looking for Mitchell's possible successor. And their somewhat ostensible vantage point was Mitchell's favorite red Ferrari seized by the government under a new law. At the church, hundreds of people were turned away from the sellout funeral, but many were lucky enough to get souvenir programs. Others just watched, quietly wondering how to explain all this to their children. The services were strictly private as family and friends said their last goodbyes to Felix Mitchell, now at last a victim himself. In Oakland, Ed Leslie, Channel 7 News. Well, those pictures that police were taking there are going to be gone over very closely to see if anybody was there who should not have been there and maybe help them focus in on trying to find out who's going to try to power their way down the same path that Mitchell did. Well, that's exactly what happened. Criminologists will go on to name an effect after Felix Mitchell, known as the Felix Mitchell Paradox, whereas after a major successful police operation, like the takedown of Felix and the 69 mob, crime and violence both would go up instead of going down like they would expect. Oakland is in the midst of a violent battle over control of the drug trade. Police say the drugs have been responsible for 41 murders already this year. Miami police report only 16 drug-related killings so far. The Oakland totals as of this week, 98 homicides, 42% of them drug-related. Last year, at this point, there had been more murders in Oakland, 106, but only 27% involved drugs. Oakland homicide detectives say the new breed of crack dealer is younger and often armed with an automatic weapon. Lieutenant James Hahn says the dealers are casual about killing to protect their business. Because of the younger age of these people, he doesn't go out and just break an arm. And now it's just you, they go out and they commit a murder. There is no attempt to collect on the debt anymore. It's, a, it's just a punishment for failure to pay. This funeral last year might have been the beginning of the trouble. Felix Mitchell was king of Oakland's drug trade, and he was killed in prison. Three other Oakland drug lords also went to jail. The result was a vacuum in the drug business. Lieutenant Hahn. What we have is a, an oversupply, so to speak, and uh, easy access to an awful lot of people who want to get into the drug trade for the quick profits. Oakland police are quick to say that the drugs fought over here are often consumed in the more exclusive parts of the Bay Area. And even in the end, after all of that, he still beat them. Last night, Channel 7's Lee McCarran outlined a new and disturbing development in the long-running saga of Felix Mitchell. Mitchell was the Oakland drug lord who operated the so-called 69 mob, tried and convicted and sentenced for assorted crimes. A few weeks ago, he was murdered. Of course, these are scenes from the funeral that shocked so many people around Oakland and the rest of the country. But at the time of his death, Felix Mitchell's case was on appeal, and a federal law known as the rule of abatement apparently means that Mitchell will be declared innocent in the eyes of the law. The ruling says when a person dies before his appeal is actually heard, the guilty verdict is vacated, thrown out. Now, what has federal prosecutors concerned is that the profits of Mitchell's dealings, his estate, may have to be returned to Mitchell's heirs eventually. They're being held by the government now. Tonight, we have Felix Mitchell's court-appointed attorney with us. And uh, we're going to take a look at the law that most of us probably did not know existed at all. Phil Cherney, I think if... Harry, we are not getting it. We have some difficulty? 
something called the rule of abatement. Essentially what uh, has federal prosecutors concerned here is they say that because his case was in appeal when in fact he was killed at, uh, at Leavenworth Federal Prison, they may in fact have to throw out the conviction that originally sent him to that prison and his attorney. Phil Cherney is with us now to talk a bit about that. We're sorry about the difficulties we had, Mr. Cherney. It, this is one of those cases that people will look at, most folks, and say, here's an, another of those insane laws that appears to make a man innocent when, in fact, the jury decided he was guilty. Comment on that, if you would, first of all. Well, maybe the appearance of, uh, of innocence um, is, is one way of looking at it. But um, I think that the, uh, what most people don't understand is the two-stage process in our criminal uh, proceedings that uh, uh, allows the, uh, the uh, uh, procedure to continue through until finality, which doesn't occur until uh, a review as a matter of right has occurred. So it's a two-stage process. Mm -hmm. And you have filed papers in this case, that is to vacate the guilty verdict, is that correct? Well, I have filed a motion to dismiss the appeal. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is uh, a standard uh, practice in, uh, in the case of death. Are you trying to clear Felix Mitchell's name in this case? Well, um, it's a difficult question to answer. Uh, the, uh, I think one of the difficulties uh, in answering that question is that uh, because we were not allowed to continue with the appeal, or, or apparently we are not, uh, a, a serious question uh, of double jeopardy law was not uh, answered by the Court of Appeals. But again, that is a legal point, a technicality as people would call it's it, and not based on guilt or innocence of Felix Mitchell, is it? It's a constitutional right, very fundamental uh, in the Fifth Amendment. Will you continue this through and expect the full abatement, that is, that, uh, that uh, his, his estate, however it stands, would be returned? Um, I expect, I hope, that I expect an, uh, a dismissal to occur and as a matter of law, as an operation of law, the abatement will occur. What happens to that property, I'm not prepared to comment on at this time. Sir, could you talk about the worth of that property? Because I, I know people have tried to find out and you certainly would know better than anybody else. Well, I, I, I'm not so sure that I do know better than anyone else, but I think it's a matter uh, at this point that is uh, speculation. Um, uh, and I think the federal government um, knows better than anyone, uh, to, to answer your question, uh, what the value of that property is. And I believe that uh, there should be an accounting uh, after this uh, procedure is, uh, is completed. Phil Cherney, and that is Felix Mitchell's attorney. And I ought to point out here, thank you, by the way, uh, I should point out that he's a court-appointed attorney for those people who make judgments about such things. It is important mm -hmm. to point that out. He is carrying this through as the law says he should carry it through. Sudden, you got a mild room, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. That's what I'm at with it. Nigga, take it how you want to take it, nigga. Mm. Stay your ass over there in the mild times. Mm. Playing no games about nothing.